Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. It is a terrible day out. It's been off and on, uh, rain and clouds and it's freezing out, but uh, the rain held up for a few minutes so I thought I'd come out and make a quick video. Um, I've been getting a few questions on my Instagram about our uh, covered utility trailer and I wanted to answer some of those questions and tell you why we got it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and why I do think that it is something every contractor needs. So this trailer here, it is a 2010 Hallmark single axle, so single 3,500 pound, no brakes, um, 12 by, I believe, six and a half um, enclosed utility trailer. It's as basic as they come. Um, so we've had this now for about a decade. It is still on the road, still treats us well, does everything we've asked of it. There's definitely a few things I wish I had done differently when we bought it, um, but for the most part, I really can't complain. It has done just about everything we've asked of it to date, um, and we have definitely pushed it way beyond uh, its limits. The first thing I wanna talk about is the size. Um, this trailer, the interior height is six foot four, something like that. But unfortunately the door, side door and the rear, um, uh, rear tailgate, I think it's only six foot or like 5'11". So I'm six foot and I just scrape my head every time I'm going in. And that's, that's something that's really annoying because your work boots are, you know, they add an extra inch. And if you have a hard hat or a ball cap or something, you're constantly grazing your head or smacking your head off of the, off of the door openings. And that can be really frustrating. Um, I know some of the longer, taller trailers, the standard doors are like 6'6", six, six, um, seven foot even. I would definitely recommend paying the extra couple hundred bucks to get the extra interior height. You, you won't be mad you did that. As for the size, um, 12 feet's been good. It, it, it served us for most of what we needed. Most standard uh, things that I'm transporting in there. Typically what I use this trailer for is things I don't want to get wet or things that I need to lock up on site, um, out of say out of mine kind of thing. Um, or delicate items that I don't want on our flatbed flying down the highway. So I'll put insulation, drywall, trim, moldings, um, you know, building materials when I order stuff in but we're not ready for it, like sinks and faucets, vanities, uh, flooring, that sort of stuff. And it all fits in there just fine. Um, there's been a lot of times I've definitely would have rather this be 14 or 16, 18 feet long. But for those half a dozen times, I've just used the bigger trailer or got the stuff delivered. Um, and then I would have had to drive around the other 99% of the time with a trailer that is much bigger, harder to park, um, harder to do everything with. Size, size is great when you need it, but it sucks when you don't. Um, just ask anybody with a crew cab long bed pickup truck. <laughs> so anyways, the next thing, with this trailer that we got was just a single 3,500 pound axle. And for building materials, like just, like I said, drywall insulation and finished supplies, flooring and whatnot, it's been fine. But we have pushed it. We've definitely pushed it when we've hauled some heavier stuff. And yes, I have bent the axle. Um, fortunately, I'm towing this with uh, three quarter ton diesel pickup trucks. So not having brakes hasn't really been an issue because it really doesn't get that heavy. Um, but the, some guys on our teams have uh, 1500 trucks, uh, some older ones too. And when they pull it, especially if we get it loaded, you notice it and stopping can get quite dangerous. So um, I, would, I would recommend if you're gonna buy the trailer, get brakes. Um, it's not worth adding at this point in this trailer's life, but if you're buying new, get a trailer with brakes. Dual axles, that all depends what you uh, what you wanna do with it. For us, like I said, just uh, light building materials, It's we don't really have the weight um, in this trailer. It's not necessary. When we do need to haul something heavy, we've got our equipment floats, got dual 7,000 pound axles. Um, I've got a video of that. I'll maybe link it in the description. Um, otherwise, if it's too heavy for that, then I'm just gonna get it delivered. Uh, there's no no sense at least at this time for me to own anything heavier than that and 
kind of to have something in between these two trailers at this time um, doesn't really make sense for us. The third thing you're going to want to consider when you are shopping these trailers is uh, what kind of rear door you're going to want. Almost all of them are going to come with a standard man door on the uh, passenger side but you're gonna have options for multi-fold tailgates, um, a single fold ramp tailgate, uh, swing out doors, swing in doors. It's all gonna depend uh, what you're using it for. Um, for us, we chose to go with a single ramp, um, mostly because it's just the easiest for loading, uh, for hand bombing materials in when we're, we're walking up, say like a fridge, right? I wanna have a fridge cart, wheel the fridge right up and into the trailer, no problems. Um, it'd also be great for throwing your lawn tractor in if you're a landscaper or something like that. Um, if you're gonna use the trailer mostly as a tool crib, we don't do that too much. Most of our trucks are outfitted with toolboxes, keep all our tools there. So there has been times that we've used this trailer as a bit of a tool crib, and when we do, it definitely would be nice to have the uh, dual barn doors, just because you can get that trailer that much closer somewhere, and not always have to think about how am I gonna fold down this seven foot ramp with the cables on either side and still be able to have easy access in and out of the trailer. Um, having said that, if I'm gonna use it as a tool crib, you have the man door. So for us, having the uh, rear tailgate full one piece just made the most sense because if I'm just going in and out quick, use the man door. If I'm gonna load something heavy and I want a dolly, we'll use the, um, use the ramp. I do know a guy though, he's a flooring contractor and he chose to go with the barn doors simply because when he goes to pick up his materials, they'll load them with a tow mower and you cannot put a tow mower like a um, forklift on that rear tailgate. That's way too heavy, you'll break the hinges on it. Um, so for him, being able to get that much closer up and be able to place that load right over the axles, it made a lot more sense. So I'll bring you around back and kind of show you the tailgate and uh, show you the inside of the trailer. So I'll take you inside the trailer and show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about. So these, real ta these rear tailgates are pretty easy to open. But what I was talking about before is these uh, these cables on the side. These are definitely gonna interfere if you don't have a lot of space. I know there are trailers with more of a um, torsion spring um, system that'll lift the tailgate up a little bit easier, but most of them, your standard utilities, are gonna come with these. So it's definitely something to think about if where you're gonna be loading and unloading, if this is gonna hinder you or not. Here's exactly what I'm talking about for the height issue just kind of about an inch. But when you get inside, loads of room to stand up. The, the ceiling arches up another at least eight inches. Um, these trailers almost all come with a plywood floor. You can totally upgrade that. And same with the walls, it's just a quarter inch ply. If you're gonna use it for a moving trailer or a tool crib, you're definitely gonna want something a little bit heavier on the sides. But what we're using, usually doing is stacking up materials and strapping over them. So for us, it's not an issue. But it's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to think about what your needs are with the trailer. Now these trailers come with a plethora of options. All we have for options are two LED lights inside and a single vent, which kinda of acts as a little bit of a skylight, allowing some natural light in when the trailer's not, uh, not plugged into the truck. Otherwise, we got it as bare bones as possible. With equipment like this, oftentimes you pay for accessories and that's what breaks. Um, there's a lot of chintzy options you could have gotten there. They provide some a little aluminum shelving or racks, straps, um, stuff like that. The only thing that's worth paying for would be extra tie down locations. Um, and if you need it, upgraded um, receivers and trailer jacks, stuff like that. Um, we kept everything else standard with this trailer as we wanted to basically keep this as our cheap um, roustabout utility trailer that kind of does a little bit of everything um, with no crazy options or fancy bells and whistles. As for wheels on these trailers, almost all of them come with really cheap, shitty wheels. Um, you get your choice of black, white, silver, steel wheels. Um, some manufacturers will offer an upgraded wheel. I think that's ridiculous to pay for. It's a utility trailer, get a steel wheel. But the tires themselves, that's worth upgrading. Burn out the ones that it comes with, they'll burn out quick, but when you go to upgrade, get a better tire. These often come with undersized tires and ply ratings that are nothing. Last thing you wanna be doing is repairing this tire on the side of the highway um, because you had a blowout and you either crashed your truck, lost your trailer, caused an accident, or almost did. So upgrade the tires once that's due. 
So in my video that I reviewed our uh, equipment trailer, I talked about frame sizes, um, how it's laid out, and the importance of oversized frames and whatnot. For these small trailers, don't worry about that. All you're gonna wanna think about is what are you gonna pull this with? How heavy is the trailer itself and what are you putting in it? And that might dictate what size, of, size coupler you go with and what size of drop leg jack you go with. I definitely recommend a drop leg, it's just a single drop leg jack unless you're gonna be leaving loads on the trailer, then go with a dual setup. Um, it's that much easier on the jack if you're gonna be leaving the trailer uh, loaded often and then your load is that much more even left and right um, while it's sitting there and you're going in and out. Otherwise, if this is just gonna be on and off your truck, only loaded when it's on your truck, just get a single leg jack. Um, but I do like the drop leg because you can simply pull a pin, drop the leg, put it back in, and all you have to do is a couple cranks to get it on and off your truck. None of this wheeling around 100 times one way or the other. Other than that, these are really simple trailers. They come in whatever colors you want, sizes you want. Just think about your needs and don't go overboard with these guys. Unless this is going to be your do everything trailer and you're only going to buy one, maybe go a little bit bigger than you think you need. But if you know that this is just going to be for general utility, don't make it too big because now you're stuck hauling around this trailer that's just way oversized. You can't get it into parking lots, you can't get it to clients' houses, you can't get into job sites. It becomes quite a hassle. The guys, <laughs> the guys who've done that, they know who they are and I know you'll justify it, but it sucks. I've been there, we've done that, we've had too big of trailers. Um, get, get what you need. If you're gonna get an oversized trailer, that's probably gonna be your equipment trailer because that's a much more expensive trailer and you never know what equipment you're gonna be hauling or uh, what equipment you might upgrade to down the road. We measured our tractor tip to toe, it was 16 feet, but I went with a 22 plus two foot beaver tail trailer because I ended up buying a larger implement that added four feet to that. Now I'm at 20 feet. If I wanna carry a second implement with me off the side, I can. But I didn't think about that right off the bat. That ended up being down the road. I was just happy that we had bought the bigger trailer. For this though, general purpose and utility, you don't need to go overkill with it. I will say though, I have been happy with the performance of this Hallmark to date. Um, it, it's, I guess it, I guess I can say it's been great because there really hasn't been any negatives. Um, I find if something doesn't stick out in your mind as a super positive experience, um, or rather a super negative experience, it probably was pretty positive. So this guy, it's been good. I definitely give it a two thumbs up. Um, I've enjoyed it today and we're gonna keep running it until, uh, until it's done and then we'll probably get another one extremely similar. I don't think bigger, but we will get a heavier axle and some, uh, some brakes on it. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Um, but if you liked it, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.